<laughs> Joseph wants to know, and I'm looking at some of your drums right now. Joseph wants to know what your your feeling, Chris, is on left center right panning when it comes to things like drums and other things in your mix. Make it as wide as possible. You know why? Because people aren't listening in stereo, and you're probably more sensitive to the stereo aspect of it. It's personal taste. I'm really a, I'm really a left right center kind of guy. I really am. Look, if you pan a hi hat to the le- to the right, which is which is audience or left, which is drummers, the overheads are going to bring it more toward the middle or anything. So I want the toms to jump out of the corners because the whole track eats it up anyway. So go go down that road. Okay, Cesar, do you have a specific order to do the first EQ and compression adjustment of a new mix you have? Like, do you work on the vocals first, or the bass first, or the drums first? Um, that's that's a Here's good a- good question. Here's a secret to your question. First you do, get the rough mix in there, okay? Make sure you have all the parts. Put up all the faders, get a quick balance of the song. Get a balance that almost sounds like the song, okay? And then say, okay, where are the problems building here? Is it the drums that aren't cutting it? Is it the guitars? Is it the vocals? I will usually first go after the drums and check the phase between the kick, snare, and the overheads. I will check to see if there's any problems there. How's that? Would you and call so, uh, would you call a problem muddiness? Some one of the, one of the things coming up on the chat right now is you know how do you deal with muddy drums? And I think you just explained that. Uh, but it's like muddiness is something I find that a lot of people are having problems with when they're first starting out. Um, so how do you deal with it? Well, here's why you're getting muddy drums. One of the reasons why is because people aren't EQing them when they record them, right? So, but look, you get muddy drums. They're super dark. Okay. Here's what you do, okay? Try to add the same amount of top end across the board and see what gets worse. If you get a ton more cymbals, it's like, okay, you know what? This snare drum's never going to be bright enough. The first thing I do with muddy drums is I start to add samples to enhance them, to make them pop through more. So, you know, it's really hard on a rock record or pop record uh, to get drums to just analog, just acoustic drums to sound great off the bat you got to add some enhancement you got to add some samples so i really think if you start by adding samples and using those as like draw bars in an organ to give you different flavors that's the start when you start eqing drums the first thing that's going to happen is like too much i had too much symbols too much leakage too much crap so dylan Unless- dylan has an extension on that is like are you doing any automation here while you're fixing that muddiness to um to deal with like bleed during the recording and how it uh, deals with the compensation of the samples that you're using no i'm not i'm not doing any to be honest with you in my mixes i get a balance on the drums i don't even touch them okay i get a balance on the drums and they stay there i occasionally Right, we'll ride a tom fill or duck a room track out to make the verse like tighter. You know, it's more creative moves. But here's the things you do, okay? If you don't compress the bejesus out of the snare, you're not going to get a ton of hi hat. And if you cut away, if you see here, if you cut away all the toms, so there's no, so it's just the toms and no cymbals, that solves the problem, right? Then you add your samples to help give you what you're missing. Are you missing a room sound? Put a room sample in there. Is the snare drum the wrong pitch or just not cutting it? Then find one that works, right? I'm, I'm not showing you all the samples. I'm just showing a couple of samples that I use. So I'll record my own drum samples. And that's what I recommend all you do. When you're tracking drums and producing a record or working on a record, every time you record drums, make some samples of those drums if you like what you're doing. And then you'll start to have a collection say, hey, give me that one from, uh, you know, give, give me the Keltner, give me the Beefer, or whatever you want to name them, you know, give me the Gods there, the Death Kick, or whatever nickname you have for it, and then add those in and automatically it's like, wow, it's coming together. <laughs> <laughs>